Alberta, Canada, the great white north, eh? Coming up here to me feels really natural. And I was up here actually with Willow Creek Outfitters 10 years ago and hunted with Kelly Weeby then. So this was kind of a reunion of sorts. So yeah, so Gordy Cron and I go back a little bit. 10 years ago we hunted together and uh, we're successful on a mule deer hunt. And yeah, it was a bit of a reunion. This time I had two tags, a tag for whitetail and a tag for a mule deer. Now this country is magnificent. And it's no wonder why you can find both species in abundance here. I mean, it's just perfect terrain for mule deer and perfect terrain for whitetails. It just screams deer at you. And I'm here to answer that call. You know, when you're coming around mid-November uh, for a combination hunt or either a mule deer or whitetail hunt, um, you know, it, you just never know what kind of weather we're going to have. Here we experienced, uh, you know, obviously a little bit of warm weather as well as some snow and cooler weather. So person definitely has to bring a good layered system. You know, both bring a, a natural colored um, exterior layer as well as maybe a set of whites or some of that. You just never know what we're gonna have this time of year. We decided right off the bat that we were gonna start out with mule deer. And there are a lot of mule deer on this ranch where we were hunting. And it's open terrain, it's hilly terrain. This is a hunt where you gotta get out and work for your deer. We do a little bit of truck stuff first. We uh, look, at a, look at the country over, see where the does are, and then we, uh, we locate some, some deer that we wanna go after. So we, uh, we park and, and shoulder the packs and uh, do that arduous hike that we like to do here. It's not really rugged terrain in the sense that this is not an elk hunt, but you're gonna be putting on miles, lots of miles, and you're gonna do a lot of walking with your optics. Optics are so important out here. So once we located the shooter buck that we liked, we, uh, you know, the wind was just quite wrong for us for the stock, so we had to make a big circle around them, and we, uh, we got in on them decently tight. Now there's one that we think is a pretty decent buck. So we're just gonna try to creep up over the top of this next hill, see if we can't get a position. Uh, but we actually bumped them. We bumped a moose that went out of the, the bluff actually and uh, kind of took the deer with them. And then we actually relocated them again later afternoon and we got in on them and they were feeding towards us and coming towards us but you know we were at about 185 from the doe 200 yards from the buck but just in a bad spot we couldn't quite get it done now when we left that buck that night it seemed to me that he was just making a big circle and he was going to end up back in that bowl that nice little hidey hole where we first spotted him well we came close last night i mean we left that buck in a good place if we can relocate him but one thing that really encouraged me was we're seeing a lot of rutting activity so the key is really and it was yesterday just keep an eye on the ladies because that's where the guys are going to be most definitely most definitely <laughs> So we snuck in there, we got up the fence line, got hidden, and we started glassing. And I don't think we were there maybe a half an hour when Kelly says, I think we found our boy. And sure enough, he was there. There was several does, some smaller bucks, but he was there. And we just had to figure out a way to get to him. And we had to again drop way out and get the wind right. And it took us about an hour and a half to kind of get in fairly tight. We got into a couple hundred yards and uh, we had to scooch in like we did uh, 10 years ago. We did the, the butt scooch there and yeah we set up on them and it was uh, it was perfect. It seems like we're always crawling, always trying to gain those few yards. Just go one yard at a time because everything I see right now is bedded so they're not going anywhere. They're just kind of tucked out of the wind here. They are. We had a pretty good idea of where he was bedded, but we could not find him. And I look over and there he is. There's a doe shooting out from the bottom and this big boy is right on her tail. But just like they often do, both deer just turned and they looked back. And that was my opportunity. I had a perfect angle at him. I had a stationary target and I took the shot. And man, I just heard that bullet smack home. 
and that was just the best feeling ever. And then he just tipped over and went sliding down the hill. Uh, like Kelly said, he's sliding in for home base, and we had ourselves our Alberta mule deer. Oh man! <laughs> <Good job. laughs> Man, did you hear that bullet hit? Oh, it just sounded just like a snack. whack, yeah. This is just what I dream about when I dream about Alberta bucks. Tall, dark, and handsome. I mean, that's what this guy is. And a big, mature buck. I mean, he's got some age yeah. on him. Yeah, so here it is 10 years later, and we did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't do more. Hey, that. congrats. Appreciate it. Appreciate hunting with you. Yeah. Destination Whitetail is brought to you by Browning Trail Cameras by Thompson Center, America's master gunmaker, by Sever Broadheads, straight through it, by Primal Tree Stands, and by Remington, America's oldest gunmaker. When Destination Whitetail returns. The good news is, Alberta is also a great destination for whitetails. Now they use the terrain a little bit differently and you have to hunt different areas, but you can get into some really good whitetail hunting here. This week the Destination Whitetail crew is in the foothills of the Canadian Rockies, courtesy of Willow Creek Outfitters. And the eastern slope of the foothills here is really wide open country which is really great for mule deer habitat. You know, a lot of coolies and draws, um, you know, some Saskatoon bushes, you know, some good cover and stuff of like that. We just came off of two days of some of the best mule deer hunting I've ever had in my life. Oh God, he's been beautiful. There. We knew he was kind of a compact rack, you know, he's not really wide, but he's got good mass and he's just perfectly symmetrical. We shot this great buck after two days. Of course, once you have a buck down out here, it's time for field dressing and a heavy but happy pack out. The good news is, Alberta is also a great destination for whitetails. The transitions into more, you know, coniferous and uh, deciduous forests there, which is definitely a good environment for the whitetails where they have a little more cover, feel a little more secure. Now they use the terrain a little bit differently and you have to hunt different areas, but you can get into some really good whitetail hunting here. It's truly changing gears big time, if you will. I mean, you get a vantage point, you're not hiking around, you're letting them move and then planting a spot and stock after that. They're occupying these brushy little draws. You gotta find a good vantage point and you've just gotta sit them out. In fact, the first day we spotted a pretty good buck, one that we thought we'd probably take. We wanted to get a better look at him. We saw him go bed down in a thicket. We got up on a high vantage point. We decided we were just gonna wait him out. But we camped on that deer all day, like eight plus hours. It was getting toward dark. The does were getting up and they were moving along around and we thought, okay, it's just a matter of time and he's gonna come out. But well, we waited to dark and he did never show up. So we just invested eight hours of prime hunting time on this one buck and we never did see him again. Now, when we watched the Weather Channel that night, <laughs> It gave us a sense of urgency. There was some wind coming in, there was some snow coming in. We really wanted to get this done in the next day if we could. We knew we were gonna head back to that same spot where we, where we located that deer in the morning. And right off the hop, we seen, you know, 15 does or so, a few smaller bucks pushing around. And, you know, it was just a really good feel for the day. We got up high and we started glassing and we saw a lot of deer movement. We just glassed for a while, we'd move to another location, we'd glass for a while, and we'd move again. And uh, we got up against this nice little stand of aspen, and we could see for miles. And there were all these really nice coolies and brushy draws, and we thought, you know, all we need to do is catch a buck on his feet in between, maybe, you know, going from one draw to the next, and that was gonna be our opportunity. So now we got these two deer coming straight at us and Kelly is calling off the yardage. How far? 250. 
and they're getting closer and closer. But I wasn't really comfortable with taking the shot because this buck was coming straight at me, and I just thought at some point he's going to turn and give me a give me a better shot angle. Visit sportsmansguide.com today and see why they're the place to go to get where you want to be outdoors. Find the very best deals on the latest gear for hunting, shooting, camping, and everything else under the stars to fuel your passion. Shop sportsmansguide.com. Welcome back to Destination Whitetail, where Gordy Cron is hot on the trail of a whitetail near the foot of the Rockies here in Alberta. So now we got these two deer coming straight at us and Kelly is calling off the yardage. How far? 250. And they're getting closer and closer, but I wasn't really comfortable with taking the shot because this buck was coming straight at me and I just thought at some point he's gonna turn and give me a give me a better shot angle. I did not like that angle. Oh, his head is still up there. I got no shot at the body. We need to get up there, get another one in him. I wasn't exactly sure where the hit was, but I knew I needed to get another round in him. I mean, here it was the fourth day of a, a five-day hunt, and I've got two great Alberta deer on the ground. That was so beautiful just to watch him come across this field. Wow, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, man. He is a nice-looking buck. Look at that. Split eye card. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he's got this little character there. And just to watch the behavior, you know, we know the rut's kicking in, and uh, there he is, right on the tail of that doe. But what about the timing? I mean, we snuck in here, what were we there, maybe 15 minutes? Maybe 15 minutes. So we got a, a really nice muley two days ago, and now we finished off our, our Canadian twofer. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's always a pleasure hunting Definitely. with you. Definitely, gorgeous. Thanks, man. Yeah. This area has a deep, rich history witnessed by our visit to the head smashed in Buffalo Jump. This is the ancient site where local native tribes harvested buffalo by running them off this cliff for literally thousands of years. What I like to do and what I think everyone should do, they should get some of the local flavor when they're in any hunting place like this and there's always going to be some history that's going to be fascinating. And here in Alberta at this particular spot, it's where the uh, Blackfoot Indians used to drive the buffalo off the cliffs. That's how they hunted them. What I find so fascinating about this as a hunter is some of the, the methods that they use, although a lot more primitive by our standards, are the same kind of techniques that, that we use as hunters. Um, they were using decoys, they were using drivers, they were using scent control, they were playing the wind, they were doing all the things that modern hunters do um, when they're hunting their quarry, and that's what they were doing with these buffalo. And it's just a fascinating story, and just fascinating to walk through this interpretive center and get a, a little taste of the history that goes back, you know, a couple thousand years here. With his deer tags filled, Gordy now turns his attention to a personal favorite, coyote hunting. I mean, I live for that, so when I knew we had about a day and a half to go hunt coyotes, I could have been more thrilled. And this is a very coyote-rich environment here. I mean, you see these guys wandering around any hour of the day. We saw them several times when we were deer hunting, so now we were gonna get a little more proactive and go after them. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, most of the coyotes just weren't having anything to do with it. We called up a lot of coyotes, but they were hanging out there at six, seven hundred yards and just weren't coming any closer. I did take a Hail Mary at a, a 600 yard coyote, but uh, the result of that was pretty predictable. But... <laughs> that was attention. Later on, we did get into a nice little bowl and called one up to, I think, about 280 yards. Well done, Gord. <laughs> wow. How was that? Well, that surprised me. <laughs> I've got to say it. <laughs> 280 oh. yards frontal. It you just looked so itty You just bitty. jumped them. Uh, you yeah. totally just jumped them. We managed to pop that one, so just a nice bonus. If you can tag a coyote hunt onto your deer hunt, you just got that much more opportunity to hunt. A lot of outfitters like Andre will let you go out there. They've got areas where they're not concerned that you're gonna booger up the deer and you can just have at it. My recommendation is if you're gonna do a hunt like this, especially a two species hunt in terrain like this, you need to be in reasonably good shape. You're gonna be doing a lot of hiking, but you're also gonna to have to be doing a lot of glassing and that really tests your patience. When you're gonna sit there for two, three hours at a time and just pick apart the terrain, you need to be mentally prepared for that. You also need to be prepared to make long shots. This is open terrain here. To get within 200 yards of a, of a deer, that's gonna be a gift. Destination Whitetail is brought to you by Antler King, bigger bucks, healthier deer. By Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. By 10 Point Crossbow Technologies, there is no substitute. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows. And by Matthews Archery. Coming up, it's Deer Tech TV, when Destination Whitetail returns. This is Deer Tech TV, the best in outdoor technology. Powered by Browning Trail Cameras. Introducing the new Mission MXR. It's built off of our award-winning cross-signature cam system with AVS, brand new grip, seven inch brace height, shoots 324 feet per second at 29 and a half inches and has a seven inch brace height, only 4.02 pounds. It's a great uh, bow in the Mission line that's built off of Matthews technology. Only $4.99 for an MSRP price. For more information, go to missionarchery.com. Hi, Mossberg's now offering their Patriot rifle in 450 Bushmaster. It's the first time we've chambered this particular caliber. We have in our Patriot Predator. We also have in our Patriot Walnut and Synthetic, so it gives you various options. Beauty of this one, it comes with a short 16 and a quarter inch barrel. They're all threaded for the addition of suppressors. Um, as with all Mossberg rifles, it comes with our lightning bolt action trigger. And this one's topped with the Picatinny rail. The other Patriot rifles come with Weaver style bases. So if you're looking for an affordable rifle to hunt in those areas where muzzle loaders, uh, shotgun only, or handguns have been available, look at the new Patriot line of rifles chambered in 450 Bushmaster. If you'd like more information on this Patriot rifle, as well as our complete line of bolt actions, please go to Mossberg.com. Today we're going to dive into the Spec Ops Advantage from Browning Trail Cameras. We all know how difficult it can be to scout and hunt bucks when they go nocturnal. This camera from Browning is designed specifically with that problem in mind. The Spec Ops Advantage features the highest quality 20 megapixel image resolution and invisible adjustable powered night vision infrared illumination that reaches out to 80 feet. This camera also features an incredible 1920 by 1080 full HD video processor, which is capable of producing stunning video footage of your game that can be easily viewed on a computer or big screen TV. Additional features for this camera include a two inch color view screen and smart infrared video, which continues to record video footage while game is moving in front of the camera. SD card management options allow you to overwrite older images on the SD card if the memory is full. 
This camera is perfect for surveillance of game animals that are easily spooked as well as a great security camera around your home or hunting property. Now this camera is loaded with features. Now let's just add a little bit of strategy to our placement. One thing that I like to do if it's available is put it over a small water hole or a small pond because they'll get good consistent action no matter what time of the year, especially if you have a food source nearby, maybe some bedding cover. It'll give you a good inventory of what kind of deer are around your property. We have great placement. I'm gonna spray it down to eliminate any human scent. And now with the Spec Ops Advantage, I know that we're gonna have great photos or video day or night.